Well, thank you guys so much for for joining. Uh, this this is a really really big webinar. We have hundreds of people from all over the world, mostly in America and Canada, and we're so excited. I mean, this is we are on the precipice of something so amazing um, within technology and within sales and just generally making human connections. Uh, I'm so excited about this. Um, a couple of housekeeping things internally. We should probably pin the speaker. So maybe, Ina, that's something that you can do. Whoever's speaking, just maybe pin them. Um, that way, Zoom doesn't do the back and forth thing. The other thing that we always like to do is that if you have specific questions, we recommend that you put those in the Q&A section within Zoom. Now, if you look below, there is a Q&A section. I'm not referring to the chat section. It is a specific questions and answers section. So I would highly recommend you to do that. This allows us to sort of monitor things, make sure that we respond to everyone. You know, sometimes we do it in text. Sometimes we do it in real time, just, you know, vocally. Um, the other thing is that keep the chats coming. I mean, that's how we get feedback. This is a live webinar. It is, you know, 1101 Pacific time. This is not pre-recorded, right? Um, I would recommend that you let us know what you are trying to accomplish, where you are tuning in from. We'd love to know the city. We'd love to know the state. We'd love to know what your profession is. We would love to know if, what kind of a dub account are you on? Are you Do you have a dub account? Are you a, on a trial? Are you on a pro account? Are you on a pro plus? We'd love to know. We'd love to know this information. So uh, thank you so much. I, I, let's start this out with a little bit of, of context. Darius, do you have any kind of housekeeping things or you want to interject? I wanted to provide context on the Michael Scott bit that we're going to do. Yeah, no. Um, so... We we covered all the basics, guys. Uh, you you have your your basic Q and A there questions. Please put them there. Chat stuff like we got coming in right now. Good to see you all. Uh, appreciate you guys. Good to see your returning faces, new people, everybody. Um, please keep those coming. We will answer them. And just like before, if we don't get to everything in this webinar, we will uh, follow up with you guys. Get you some answers after. Um, and there's going to be this is this is we're in a in a very changing time right now guys there's a lot of transition happening in terms of technology and the way that we're communicating and we're trying to do our best job to stay ahead of this curve and that's why you guys are here today is this is this is we're always trying not not just like one step ahead we want to be as far ahead of the curve as we can and this is uh, one of those emerging technologies guys that we'd love to get into your hands as soon as possible so you can too also stay ahead of the game yeah so right. important um, here's here's kind of my take on this. The reason why we've been really going all in on artificial intelligence is because I think it really comes down to the idea of efficiency, right? We have this technology that's available for us. You know, most of us by now have, have used ChatGPT. You know, I'd love to get a one in the comments if you are using AI on some recurring basis. And if you're not using AI yet, just put two, right? I would love to know. I'd love to get a gauge on that. One for yes, I'm using AI. Two for no, I'm not using AI. Um, but the idea here is efficiency and effectiveness. That's really what it comes down to. Every time there's been an introduction of technology, we've always, some early, some late, some right in the middle, have, have figured out a way to adopt that technology. No one in this room has a BlackBerry phone. No one in this room has a handspring. No one in this room has a Palm Pilot. We've all adopted. We've all progressed. We have Androids and iPhones and technology, amazing technology. Artificial intelligence is basically the same thing. Now, I will say that it's 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 cool on a whole different level because it's absolutely intelligent. But it's intelligent in its own silo. It's not intelligent within the framework of you and what you do and your business and what you offer and what your pricing is and how your contracts work and what your products and services are, it's not trained on you. It's trained on, frankly, everything on the internet. So one of the things that we're really excited to talk about today is how you can actually use Dub to create your own sales GPT, your own sales interactive assistant. It's called SIA, okay? Now I'd like to give a little bit of context on how we're going to communicate how this technology works. We decided, we're dub, we decided to make a little fun, okay? We have Rob, right? We've got a resident, you know, actor, performer, extraordinaire. So Rob is with us. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna show a before and we're gonna show an after. So the before is, what does it look like now when we send a video, it's on a landing page, and then there's a call to action. Book a time in my calendar, fill out a form, visit my website. 
it's it's an effective model. It works great. We all do it every single day, hopefully. It's really effective, right? Show them a video, make a human connection, build that parasocial relationship, provide value to them, and then inspire, motivate, persuade them to want to fill out a form like a booking time in your calendar or like a web form on your on your site or even a checkout form, depending on what you do, right? So in the new model, what we have is we've got a landing page. We've got a video because we want to show them we're a real human being. We want to we want to show them our empathy. We want to show them our value. We want to show them our intelligence. But what we also want to do is field the countless numbers of questions that they have, the objections. How does this work? What do your contracts work like? How do I get started? What are your testimonials? What are your case studies? There's so many questions that people have before they want to buy from you. Someone, I remember someone once said something to me, and it was a very polarizing thing for me to hear. But they said they were looking at a landing page, and there was a video and there was a form on it. And they said, wow, that's a very arrogant landing page because there's a video and you're assuming that people are just going to fill out that form. What if they have more questions? What if they want more information? What if they need more context? Now, I wouldn't talk like that because it's a little polarizing. But the point, though, is that oftentimes there's this long tail of questions, of concerns, of fears, uncertainties, and doubts that people have before they want to go to the next level. And that, my friend, is where Sia, your new sales interactive assistant, is going to help you solve that problem. So it's really about decreasing that wide gap between engaging someone with a piece of content, showing them a video, and then wanting them to get to the next level, wanting them to fill out that form, book a time in your calendar, check out whatever it is that you want them to do. It's really mining and, and connecting this gap and bringing it closer together. The statistics are that 50 to 90% of the people that go to a landing page, no matter how good it is, are going to bounce, which means pretty much always the majority of people that go to our landing pages are not going to complete our forms. The reason why SIA is going to solve the conversion problem is because SIA is going to help people to get to the next level. It's a very innocuous non-threatening, non-salesy, value-based, information-based exchange that's very, very beneficial. In fact, it's very mutually beneficial because as SIA learns more about your prospects and the person on that landing, landing page, they can provide more context, okay? So, Darius, can I pass to you and you can set up the stage on the Michael, so Michael Scott show? Well, let's do it. We're ready. All right, so I'm I'm gonna take away Ruben's pen for a second. I'm gonna present my screen, guys, and we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about the old way, like Ruben was just mentioning. Um, not the old way means it's traditional. This is what we're all doing currently today, which is the video and the the button, the call to action beneath it, right? This is what currently we're using video to drive this action. But Ruben addressed that there is a gap. There's a gap between the number of people that land on this page and the number of people that actually convert and take the booking or the link or take the action that we actually want them to. And so this is what it currently looks like today, right? This is the state of the union today. Now, we're going to introduce Rob. We're going to have him play a scene, if you will. And this is going to be the new way, the new method, the new technology. And this is also, in this, in this scene we're going to introduce, Rob is your lead. He is your potential customer. So keep that in mind. In this scene we're about to share with you, Rob is your next lead, your next potential customer, and he's going to act out the interaction with Sia, and you're going to learn how AI can now enhance conversions, conversations, and opportunities from every message you share. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the stage to Rob. And remember, he's your lead, your next contact, and he's going to be engaging with Sia. Rob, go ahead. And in There's this context, and in this context, you, my friends, are Michael Scott because you are the person that created that video and that landing page. So Rob is your buyer. <laughs> Guys, where are the ties? Am I, am I the only one today? <laughs> the tie the suit? Okay, tied. I feel overdressed. Okay, so here we go. So let me share my screen and we are going to begin. All right, here we go. Oh, Michael. All right, great. He actually sent me a video. I got his phone calls. I got his emails, but looks like he's actually stepped up to the plate and is actually using asynchronous video. Okay, great. All right. Very, very savvy. Good presentation. Direct to camera. I liked what I heard. 
Um, but I, uh, Michael, man, I'm not, I'm not ready to book a time yet. I actually have some questions right now. I actually need them. Oh, wait, chat with AI assistant. Hold on. Let me click this thing. Oh, all right. Drops me down. Wait. Hello. Thanks for your interest. Please ask a question. All right. Below for a quick AI response. Quick and AI. Okay. AI it means it's knowledgeable. All right. What we got here? Um, you know, pricing. Yeah. Obviously Michael's not mentioning in the video. He's worrying about making a connection. I get that. Don't want to slow down the momentum. Um, all right, pricing. Yeah, let, let's jump into the pricing. I want to know that right away. So I'm glad he has an FAQ here, which is nice. Oh, competitive, competitive pricing. Okay, I know paper in 2024 can be pretty competitive. Um, let's see, be real, friendship, okay. Uh, work something out. All right, I like that. We can work something out. He's willing to negotiate. He's great at deals. Okay, yeah, me too. So I guess we're gonna have to see how that works out. Who's got more uh, ability here? Uh, may I ask you about your situation? You can ask me, Michael, and I can provide that. Okay. Um, uh, book a meeting. Okay. Oh, I like the fact that this is telling me I can book a meeting. It's driving me to do something. All right. This is pretty cool. I could actually do this for what I do. Um, but you know what though? I still, I still got some questions. Okay. Customer service. Yeah, I'm sure they're great. Um, what, what paper company doesn't have good customer service? Um, but you know, uh, the quality of the paper, you know, I want to know the quality of the paper. Speaking of that, you know, 2024, I think we're all thinking about paper, aren't we? Okay. So let's see. So good. Uh, you so good. You can write your name on it. Um, but you still can't write it on. It's top notch. Okay. Top notch. I like that phrase. The pen is mightier than the sword. Oh, Michael, you're pretty funny. All right, may I ask you about your situation? Yeah, yeah, I can get into that. But you know, Michael, I know you mentioned in the video, you know, the the goods, uh, what you guys do. But this is a big question. I'm glad you have this as an FAQ, though. Why should I choose you or some other paper pusher right down the road outside of you guys? Why should I do that? So let me. I'm glad he has that as an FAQ. Let me see what he's got. Well. Okay, Dunder Mifflin. I, I get it. You're a big name in the industry. I get that. Uh, the little guy. Yeah, big name with the little guy. Uh, you care. Of course you care, Michael. Um, yeah, Faceless Corporation. Now I get it. Um, friendly Faces. Love Friendly Faces. That's why I'm so glad you're doing an asynchronous video. That's a big step up for you, Michael. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. That's great. This is great. I'm actually getting all my questions answered right now because sometimes I got to be honest, you know, when I get videos, sometimes I'm not ready to book a time. You know, I want a little more information, but I'm not ready to jump on a phone call. I actually want to get it right here. So this is really great that he's decided to do this. Wow, they're stepping up their game. All right. So I'm going to book a meeting. Let's click here. You got me. Let me book a meeting here. Okay. Let's see. When do I want to book with him? I'm going to make him wait a little bit. Let me jump on here. I'm going to go Wednesday. Yeah, let's go 9 a.m. All right, I'm going to do that. And also, <clears throat> I want to tell you something about this video, guys. Now, the cool thing that he did. Oh, wait, sorry. Hold on. Wait, I'm getting a I'm getting a phone call here. Hello? Michael, I just saw your video. No, I just I just watched it. No, I look. No, no, I, no, it's great. I'm glad to see you're doing that. But uh, I like that you're following up. You guys are still doing the Omni Channel thing. Uh, I, I'm going to book a time for you for uh, in early October. Michael, I actually got to jump to a meeting right after this. No, I totally know you guys are great. Listen, I really appreciate it. I booked the time and I love the fact that you guys are using AI now. You got a little AI assistant there and it really made the difference. Yeah. No, I No, I know. I know. I know. It's all about the humans, but you did a great job with the AI. I really appreciate it. Michael, I got to run, but thanks for following up. Oh, boy. Anyway, back over to you guys. Oh, that was awesome. Okay. That was, I, I can't wait to get into this, Rob. That was a great performance. What I love about what you did, Rob, was that you presented the mind, the psychology. You can, you can go ahead and spotlight my video, I think, you know. It's I'm good. not sure if it is. What you presented was the psychology of a buyer. When a buyer goes to watch a video on a landing page, they've got a lot of questions. They've got a lot of objections. How much does it cost? What is your customer service? How do you compare against your competitors? Um, how do I get out of contracts? Do you guys offer what I'm looking for? You know, what is the uh, uh, sort of a, a scale up program that I can do with you if I want to continue to work with you? There are so many questions that people have. What in this case, what Sia has done is she has learned all of the context. Um, let me actually I think I think my video is not spotlit. Sorry, give me one second here. You're, you're spotlit, Ruben. You're the main. Oh, OK. Guy. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, so what Sia has done in this context here is that Sia was fully trained on Dunler. Okay. Marty, thank you for that feedback. Let me, let me give you a little bit of context here. So let's just stay with us for a minute here. Okay. So what Rob was doing was he was interacting with an AI assistant for a salesperson. In this case, it was Michael Scott. That AI sales assistant was trained on frequently asked questions, information about the business, information on how it works, and the end user, the prospect, in this case, Rob Botts, 
he was able to interact with the AI assistant. So I want you to picture this. We know what chat GPT is. We can go to chat GPT and we can chat with it and it can provide us information. Now imagine if you can take chat GPT, you can train it on everything about your business. You can give it your desired call to action link, like your booking link or your website or a, a checkout form, okay? And then you can take that and deploy that out to your prospects so that now when they go on a landing page, on a dub landing page, and they watch a video from you, instead of having to click on the button below to book a time in your calendar, they can start to engage, ask questions, receive information back from your AI assistant. So Marty, I hope that makes sense. I, I wanna I wanna make sure you're you're fully, fully clear here. Darius, you wanna jump in? Yes, yeah. So I can see so, some people totally get it right away, and some people are like, I have no idea what's happening. So okay, right. let's 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 take a moment. We we thought this might happen. That's why we yeah. tried to play a scene and, and like make it real for you guys. So just really quickly, I'm gonna show side by side the difference here. This is the traditional experience where you have a call to action button with what you want someone to do on the page. We have released a new experience where there is now a programmable, customizable, AI powered assistant that you can put on your video pages. So we're giving the example here and saying, Michael Scott is a user of Dub, meaning you, you are Michael Scott. You have access to putting a AI powered assistant on your page so that it can answer questions for your customers, your clients. It can present your call to action buttons, your calendars, your phone numbers, whatever you want someone to do. It can act as you trained on your knowledge, presenting your links and opportunities. So it's like chat GPT, except for it's your sales GPT. And it does sales activities like capture leads, present calls to actions, qualify, question, nurture, educate. It does sales and customer service activities specific to your business and your training. So it is like chat GPT in that it's really smart and knows everything about your business, except for it's a sales GPT, which would another, another soft word for this. So it's your own AI assistant that exists on your videos that can answer questions, qualify, present options, activities, book, fill out forms, capture leads. This one, it presents a calendar link so that someone can book a time with Michael here. So this is the idea of it, guys, is fully customizable AI assistant can now exist on your videos. So Darius, and we're one, starting, uh, no, we're sorry, start, I was going to say, we're starting to get some light bulbs here. Mark, thank you so much for that comment. It is brilliant. It's, it's amazing. I mean, this is the power of artificial intelligence. We have been listening. We've been listening to your feedback and we want to increase your conversion rates. Bill, thank you so much for saying that. Really appreciate the positive remark there. Marty, you, I love your comment. You said, now I have to build a database of frequently asked questions. <laughs> Absolutely. And here's, and I'll tell you what, what Darius, Rob, and I did was we got on a Zoom call. It was, it was a totally, it was a Friday. It was like five o'clock. We're like, all right, let's record all of our FAQs for, for the business. There's, there's like 20 or 30 of them. So we kind of started, we built up a Google Doc. We went to our intercom, our support chat. And we said, here's the top 20 questions that people ask when they want to sign up for our company, right? And we we just literally got on the Zoom. We we I asked Darius, he asked me. We we sort of round robined it, and then we mined the answers in a transcript, and then we populated Sia, which Darius is going to do in a moment. We populated Sia with frequently asked questions. There was twenty of them, and then we also gave Sia all of our resource links, our website, our support uh, database, um, you know, our review sites, you know, what people have said about us. Um, testimonial pages, case study pages. If you have links, Sia is absolutely hungry for those website links. So I'll pass it off to Darius and he can kind of show you the nuts and the bolts, but maybe we'll do, we'll do a check-in here um, on the chat just to see if we're. Uh, yeah, that, we that's what I was just doing as well. Before you go, yes. before you go, Darius, just real quick on that. Rob. So just like from a, from a simple perspective of how amazing it is to send video and how we're always like, Hey, click below for the button, right? Book a time, do the thing. There's a percentage of people that you're getting, which is awesome. That's the whole point it was built. But there's also a, a percentage of people like I was there where I was like, you know what? I just really want some more info right now. And, and not just going somewhere else, being able to interact 
with the AI assistant. And the fact that the AI was still pushing me with the CTA was great. And the CTA in that situation was book a time with me. But I just needed a little more info to make me to the point where I was like, you know what? Now I'm going to book a time. And it's a yeah. much stronger appointment once that happens. So that's the immediacy of the interaction is what the whole point is, I think. And then there was a there was a comment which I which I have to answer. Um, you know, we we set that up to be a little bit comedic. So we decided <laughs> right. to use Dunder Mifflin. We uploaded their video and Michael Scott was the character. You know, that's all this is all designed by you. We were just having a little bit of fun because we need to have a little bit of a mock video and we don't want people to get hung up. We didn't want to use our own stuff. It, it, it felt a little egocentric. So we wanted to just be a little agnostic. So you would upload your video, your logo, your FAQs, your resource links, everything about your business. And then Sia now will take on the role of being your AI assistant and answer your questions in the language, in the tone, in the format that you designate. And that's all what Darius is going to show us on the back end. Exactly. I love the comments keep coming in. I'm so happy and so glad to see you guys because this is this is a brand new technology, right, guys? AI has not been out for long. And this that we're showing you today is, is a completely turn it on, it on its head concept. Because people that are familiar with AI are used to going to an AI and asking questions and getting an answer in their own little world. So this is turning that concept on its head where you're now taking that AI, having it learn everything about you and your business and your questions, answers, opportunities, et cetera, like a salesperson, a, a marketing you know, department, and then you're leveraging it on your behalf as your front facing, uh, your front line defense, right? Your your the first stuff that people see of you besides the video of you itself, of course. So um, I'm really happy to see that you guys are, are getting this this concept because, yeah. like I said, it is it is revolutionary. It's taking this brand new emerging technology and turning it on its head and reversing the order in which people are used to interacting with it. So I was I was also going to say um, someone mentioned that GHL has this go high level. You know what you will see companies using AI for their support. So, yeah. for example, if you go to your Dub dashboard or if you go to the Dub homepage, you will notice a little circle on the bottom right. And if you click on it, there's an interactive AI agent. It's called Finn. We use a company called Intercom to help with us. That is very specific for support. That is the support widget. That that's that technology has been around for some time now, and it, and it right. works. It's getting better and better. Um, but this is different. This is your sales assistant because this is something that you're going to create multiple assistants. You're going to create a team of assistants. You're going to create one SIA assistant for your for your lead prospecting, one for your nurturing, one for your client closing, one for your social media posts, one for you know outbound, one for inbound. You can create a team of SIA assistants based on different uh, life cycles where a person is in your buying cycle, but also what the call to action is. Because the thing that is very important about SIA which Darius will show in just a moment here, is that SIA is trained for a couple of things. Number one, it's trained on your business. You feed it links and you feed it FAQs, frankly, and it's amazing. Number two is that it's going to want to always drive the sale. That's sales 101, right? It's got a, it's got a link, it's got a checkout link, it's got a Calendly link, it's got a web form link, whatever you want your link to be. It has that link and it is trained to continue to drive that sale and continue to persuade the person to go to that link. So it will answer questions in real time, but it will say, click on the link if you want to you know, book a time with Darius. Click on the link if you want to fill out a form. Click on the link if you want to join this webinar. In fact, many of you guys are here today because you interacted with Sia. Sia answered questions and then she provided the, the Zoom registration link. But the next thing that's so powerful about Sia which is something that we're rolling out, is this idea of lead capture. It's going to progressively profile and progressively capture the contact, the prospect's contact information, their email, their name, their phone number, their company, their company size. What are they looking to buy? What is their budget? These questions are buying questions. And SIA is going to help you get those. Darius? Let's do it, guys. So I see a ton of good questions coming in. I'm going to be able to answer some of these. Actually, many of your guys' questions will be answered as I'm presenting this next part, which is the actual setup of SIA, of the AI. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. If you guys can make sure my, my screen is uh, shared correctly there and I'm spotlight, whatever. Okay. Right. Guys, this thing is, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. There's going to be some iterations. This is version 1.0, right? This is the release of this feature. So Stay tuned because there are going to be changes coming 
um, improvements to this technology as we get more feedback. Your guys' feedback, we're going to be listening closely. We're going to be leveraging it ourselves. So this may not look exactly identical to this process in the coming months, but it's going to be very similar. The first start by right, right now, it's in the call to action menu. Eventually, it may be its own asset, its own line item. Currently, you go to call to actions. And those of you that have asked, this is available right now, guys, on Pro and Pro Plus and free trial. So you guys can sign up and try this thing for yourself on, 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 on your plans, your existing plans. So uh, no need to upgrade to a special plan to, to get access to it. Um, now, this is what the creation looks like. Uh, someone else had a question is what if I have like different neighborhoods or if I have different things, Ruben mentioned that you can have as many different SIAs trained for different purposes. So that's what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through the uh, purpose of one SIA for, and this one's going to be for um, the webinar. Like this is what we did. We wanted it to drive this webinar registration. So I'm going to call this webinar SIA. And then the type is SIA. It's the interactive assistant. Now, the first thing is resource links, guys. This is one of the easiest ways to train the AI. All you have to do is provide an existing link. That means you don't need to come and do anything else. Just give it the link. This will be dependent, though, on your actual website, the content that you give it. For example, like LinkedIn profile. If your LinkedIn profile has no information about you or very little, there's not much it could get from there, right? Or your website. If the website has a ton of information, has FAQs, has... Um, lots of detailed information on product and testimonials, et cetera. It's going to be able to access and, and generate information from there. So these resources, guys, someone mentioned earlier, like, oh, so I have to train every single custom question, and answer and response. No, no, you actually don't. You don't need to train every single question and answer that you might want it to possibly do. That's the old version, right? That's what chat bots were. Guys, this is far more intelligent and robust than, than the chat bots of old. This is like you put your link to your website. And any information on your website that's available, it can answer questions about. So this is totally different from programming every single answer and response, guys. It's much better and much faster than that. So as long as the resources you have are somewhat uh, populated, somewhat relevant, right? If your website is blank, it doesn't give you much value here. So this is the first option is providing resource links. Guys, this can be blog posts, websites virtually anything that is a publicly accessible website, a link that you can, if you can access it on Google without needing a special login or whatever, then the AI is going to be able to access that resource as part of its knowledge database. Does not even have to be your guys' direct resources, right? It can be something else. If maybe you're part of a brokerage or you're part of a team or you're part of an organization, you can use those resources as well. Um, so this is the first piece, the easiest part, where you can just drop in your direct links to resources. This also includes like a web page, like I said, like a blog post that just has a ton of information on it. Um, whatever you guys want, you can do it. And what Ruben mentioned also was we did a live Q&A session. We just recorded a video, took all of that copy, put it on a web page, and then that is a resource link where every discussion we've had is now in there. The other part, guys, this is the FAQs. The FAQs has a unique behavior in that it presents these as little buttons, if you will, that exist as part of the chat. What we recommend for these FAQs, guys, is if you have no idea like what your FAQs are, like, I have no idea what these should be. Great, go use Ira. Go use the other AI that we built for you guys, right? Um, hopefully, you have set up your Ira on your account so that when you go to your Ira, it's trained on who you are and everything. So you can say, write a list of FAQs for me, right? If you set up your profile, guys, if you're not sure aware of this profile one yet, let us know. That's a separate webinar, separate feature we've done. <laughs> you can set up our other IRA and you can ask it, what are FAQs for my site? If, you, if you're having struggling with those FAQs. Um, the point being of the FAQs though, is they make it much easier for someone who like, I don't even know what questions I should be asking. I'm not an educated buyer. Like for the real estate example, I'm brand new. I've never purchased or sold or done any real estate transaction. I don't even know what questions I should be asking. What are rates like? Why you versus other real, right? We don't know. So give them those questions. It makes it easy to start the conversation. It also is going to make it easy to move forward to the rest of the conversation. So let's go. I'm going to say, how much does Dub cost? Oh, this one is actually, it's designed to not chat with yourself. So that, that uh, forgive me for that one really quick, but let me... 
pull it open here. And so I'm going to say here, um, let me go to a new version though. So it is designed to also remember conversations, guys. So when somebody revisits, it's going to remember the conversations. So this one's a brand new one. So let's go here. And I'm going to use one of the FAQs. How much is Doug? And remember, these are your own FAQs. They're not Doug's. And it's going to present. And then it says, can you please provide me your email address? So it's doing the progressive profiling. So I'm going to give it here a Darius plus Sia test three at dub.com. Give it my email. And then it's going to say, great, thanks for your email. How about your name? How about your phone number? So it's going to do this progressive profiling where it presents the questions, the fields, and the forms that you want to capture. What is your budget? Are you working with an agent? Right, Whatever those are, it's going to collect those answers and present the calls to action. Right, Here's the pricing page or here's your whatever CTA that you want to drive. So that's exactly how the FAQs, the training, and the resources are designed to work in conjunction. The, the last thing I'll show you guys is someone else had, not the last thing, I guess, another thing I'll show you <laughs> is that sometimes like we want different purposes. We mentioned we have our FIN, our AI customer service assistant on our website. Most people on our website are already dub customers and we don't, we're not so interested in presenting CTAs and driving or capturing leads. We're just providing information. And so this is going to be an option for SIA where you have the ability to include which fields you'd want to capture. Now, this is a feature that's being rolled out, guys. So some of these features are available to you right now, the majority of which I've shown you guys, the FAQs, the resources, all of these are currently available. You can get this in your hands today, and we would love for you guys to do that. That's the whole purpose of this training. We want you guys to go activate this in your business today, right after this. And just also be aware, we're going to continue to improve and innovate this technology as new things become available. And as you guys give us your feedback, as we continue to learn, this is such an emerging technology, like open AI, right? As like the leading space in this, they are discovering things every day. They are releasing new features and functions every day, every week. And so as that happens, we're going to continue to develop and innovate this technology and bring it to you guys. So we're trying to make these new, really high-end, cool technologies that are so complex or difficult to understand, give you guys easy controls and training and resources and uh, guidance to help you leverage it. Yeah, I wanted to provide a little bit of context on some of the uh, questions that we received. Thank you so much for all the engaging information and, and feedback that you're giving us in real time. This is really valuable for us. So number one is that the thing that, here, let me actually adjust my camera one, one moment here. There you go. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So number one is that you will be able to up to add a link. Okay. You will also be able to eventually add uh, upload a PDF or a text document. We don't have that right now. We're, that's something that we're rolling out. So what we recommend that you do at this point is to populate the frequently asked questions. Darius gave the best uh, suggestion and reminder on that is that there's, there's actually a link so that you can go and pre-generate FAQs for your business already in the form, or you can just go directly to Ira and you can ask Ira, our AI writing assistant, you can say, please write 20 FAQs for my business. Now, Darius mentioned also that you should have your AI profile, which is something in our, in our Ira AI writing assistant feature. I would, you know, if you could share the support link for that, I really want to make sure that folks are using our AI writer because that's going to help you populate the data and the information to make SIA a lot more effective. So your FAQs is going to be your best bet. Okay. There's a, there's some folks that think, Hey, I've got this long training doc. It's this five page PDF. It's a text doc. It's a word doc. I just would love to be able to upload that whole thing. I would definitely recommend that you curate your information and that you don't add superfluous information. You know, Darius says it best. Um, Darius says, do not populate your, uh, sorry. What do you say? Yeah, don't pollute it. Don't pollute it. Yes. You Darius guys don't want irrelevant reminder. information because then that's where it can make the hallucinations and give wrong answers or, or just irrelevant answers. So it's not more is more, right? Sometimes more is less, sometimes more yeah. damaging. So better is better. Not more is better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So just be very careful about, about, um, you know, polluting your data, which means just Say, hey, here's a big long thing. Just go go work on this. And then it's because who knows what it's going to assume or come up with. Even a human being can make a mistake. 
we all know by now that that there is something called hallucinating, which is what artificial intelligence does when it doesn't know the answer. Now we have we have rigorously trained Sia to say to be more honest. You know, ChatGPT might actually halluc hallucinate something. I think it's doing a much better job. The 4.0 model has made a massive improvement on that, but some of the, the 3.0 and 2.0 definitely had some hallucination issues. Um, but we have trained it. Say, if, if you don't know something, please just say, I don't know it. And please, you know, connect with my uh, with my boss or click on this link to 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 provide more, to get, to get more information. So um, the more information you give it, the more intelligent it will be. The second thing that I wanted to say was that there was a comment here, which I loved, um, which is, here it is, um, Dick Nichols, it feels like I'm cloning myself, but even more important, it will be the very best of me. Wow. Three exclamation points. Um, thank you for that comment. You get it, Dick. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that comment. We need feedback like that. That's exactly what this is. I mean, how many times, please put one in the comments. If you've ever said this statement, I wish I could clone myself. I wish there were more versions of me. Okay, that great cliche that we always say when we feel stressed and strapped and we wish that we could get support. Well, folks, now you can with Sia because Sia, I always want to say she. I don't know if I don't know if I should start doing that yet. <laughs> Does Sia have a gender? <laughs> but Sia is your trained AI assistant, and you can train Sia. Just invest the time. Use Ira, generate your FAQs, you know, update your website. If you have an FAQ section on your website, if you have a review page if you have a linkedin profile you know update those links with relevant information and then populate them into the sia form within um within within the right now darius mentioned that it's in ctas and eventually we are going to migrate that into the assets section but right now you can find that if you go to create create a new cta and then you select ai assistant as the option so hopefully that makes sense if not please put it in the comments we are are going to share the recording of this video and we do have a, a very extensive training video on this as well um is there any other yeah. feedback that i have i think th i think that answers a couple of the questions darius i'll pass to you yeah thanks guys i'm just working my way through the uh the the q a as well i i remember it's, we want we want questions in the in the q a and then comments in the chat i know it's hard to remember that stuff and we we, we kind of answer from both so so don't don't worry there guys um, but I was answering some, some some specific ones in the thing. Someone had a good question, which I know is going to come up again more in the future. Is like if I have some other AI assistant trained, uh, how did you train it? You gave it text, right? You gave it a, a PDF or a document or a web page. You gave it something. You can. There's a couple ways to. We call this like a mind meld or a a, a convergence of your different AIs. You can either go to your AI tool, like let's say you've been using Chat GPT itself and you have it trained on all your things, you can literally go to the AI and, and ask it, tell it, give me a, a text file of all the stuff you know about me in the form of a resource I can use to train another AI. Like literally just speak to it like a really smart person. And it's going to give you that. It's going to say, here's everything you taught me about yourself and in a format you can use to train another AI. And then there you go. You have an instant download of everything your AI assistant knows about you. Or if you've, you're using an AI assistant more similar to SIA already, where you're actually uploading web pages or documents or other AI training resources, right? You've already had to do that. It didn't just generate them on its own. Any work that you've done in any AI is recyclable, guys. It's going to carry over. It's just like video stuff. When you get good at doing video, that carries over to any video thing. Your, your scripts that you write, your video you create can be shared on multiple channels. The AI training is the same, guys. You come up with the resources, the FAQs or the web pages or the conversations or whatever you're using to train one AI model. And then you can very easily add that information to other AI models. So no amount of work you do in any AI is going to be really wasted. Maybe a little bit of it if, if the AIs have some very specific features or functions or whatever. Um, but for the most part, you're going to be able to converge these different AIs very easily. So um, th that's a, a good good question and, and a bigger topic. Another one that, and, and this Ruben, you actually had this idea months ago. You wanted to use our AI, our avatar feature to answer these questions. And <laughs> guys, that's the dream. Like we, we wanted this so bad, but the problem is again, this is embryonic technology. It's emerging technology. Yeah. These, the, what, what we're calling this again, maybe a little more technical than some of you guys need, but 
GPUs are the graphic processors and they're way faster than the, the servers of old. And they can generate video much faster than, than what it was before, but still the speed is, is not what we need it to be for real time video avatar generation answering these, these questions. So Owen, I love where you're going with it. Uh, unfortunately, the tech just isn't there yet. So I, I can't say in a year though, we could, we could be there maybe, maybe two, uh, cause video generation is still, is still very slow from, from an AI perspective, but. Uh, yeah, there, I, I, from my perspective, the best user experience is typing, and then uh, we're we're going to be adding voice eventually to this, so that so that you can listen to the the end user can listen to the responses. Um, but video is there's a lag; it's just it's slow. AI avatar videos. I mean, if if anyone's ever used Synthesia or one of those AI or even Ava on Dub, because we have an, an AI video generator, it takes a it takes a while, so you have to be patient. Yeah. You know, usually you have to go generate it and then come back in a couple of minutes and it's done. So it's not an instant thing. I did want to answer a couple of questions. Number one is that how often will it uh, rescan links? If you put in your website and then you update your website and then you what will how will it re-update it? So there's there you just have to re resave the page or click the refresh button, um, which we're going to be we're we're going to be adding that and that's going to go and rescan your page. So it's not going to can you imagine if this thing was scanning every page every time it's that's not practical so you have to preemptively go and resave refresh so that it knows that there are updates on your site at which point it will the other thing that it will do is that it's trained to go if it does not know the answer based on the knowledge base that it's acquiring it will go and do a quick search on the links that you provided and it can even go outside like let's just say let's just say someone's looking to to purchase a large investment for a million dollars right and they say, how do I know if I'm qualified to make this purchase? Maybe you didn't answer that question, but that's a very answerable question. If someone can, how can someone know if they can afford to buy something for a million dollars? Sia is intelligent. Sia is going to go search the web and Sia is going to say, okay, well, we need to talk about their credit score. We need to talk about their financing. We need to talk about leverage. And it's going to figure out all these things. And it's going to provide a very viable answer to that almost as if a human would do. Now, the thing that I always love to talk about, we have a YouTube video coming out on our YouTube channel, the Dub App channel. You know, if you could share the link to that, we'd love to have you guys subscribe to this channel. Rob and I are doing a video where it's AI versus HI. So it's basically Sia versus Rob. Okay, I know you guys are rooting on Rob because we all love Rob, but you know- Let's go, let's go, I'll, I'll dead let's go. get on my side. Let's go, who, who's, who's for me, anybody? <laughs> Dead yeah. giveaway, Sia wins because Sia can talk, Sia, Sia can chat over 200 words per minute. So when <laughs> someone types, what is your pricing? A human being is going to take a while. They're going to say, it's this and this. And it's, and, you know, it takes a long time for a human being to type, not to mention there's typos. Sia types at over 200 words per minute. And there's no, I've no, I haven't seen a typo yet or grammar issues. Okay. So, anyways, I hope that answers the question about updating links. Um, exterior links are good. It can be a private link on a page, but it can't, it has to be published, right? So if it's a WordPress page, it can't be like a private page. It has to be viewable. And the way that you can know that is if you put your link in an incognito window and, and determine if it's visible. And if it is, then Sia is going to be able to scan that. Sia is not scanning YouTube videos, nor is uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI or Gemini or any of those. That's a technology that's coming in the future. So stay tuned on that. There will in a moment, I'm going to show you how to how to scan a dub video with with a transcript. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, someone mentioned uh, a really good question. When Sia is capturing leads, Sia is going to say, how can I help you? What question do you have? The person will type their question. Sia will provide a response. And then Sia is going to say, what is your situation? What are your goals? Sia is trying to learn about this person's situation so that Sia can provide better information. Then at that point, if you turned this feature on, only if you turned it on, Sia is going to start to capture the information. What is your email address? Now, it's going to continue to answer questions, but it's going to, as Darius mentioned, it will progressively profile that prospect and capture their email, capture their phone, capture their name, capture their company name, many of those fields that we mentioned before. This is only a feature that works if you turn it on. If you do not want to capture leads like this, like if you already know these people, then just turn that off. It's just some check boxes, okay? The question was, will I receive an email notification? Absolutely. You will absolutely receive an email notification when this starts to generate leads. In fact, we have so much more to share with you. 
Darius, CRM, tag adding. How do you interact with the messaging? We'd love to get that information from you on your screen. Yeah. I have two more, two more questions to answer very quickly. Um, you know, someone asked, how do we interact? How do we go and, and sort of step in and maybe turn SIA off and just, you know, human yep. intervene or intercept? You know, that's something that we can talk about. Um, and then, you know, a QR code. So you can generate a QR code and someone can scan that QR code and then go to your SIA video page and then start to interact with your assistant. So the way that I want you to think about this is that it's the same experience that you guys have been doing already on Dub. You create, a, you record a video through the Dub mobile app, through the Dub desktop app, through the Dub Chrome extension, the Dub website, or you import from YouTube or you upload, right? And then it, you get a landing page. That's a great concept. Now, instead of a call to action being to you know go to an external link, now SIA is your integrated widget experience that is going to provide real-time answers directly on this page. So the experience doesn't change much. In fact, it's so easy that you set up SIA and then add SIA to your presets, which is actually going to be a default feature pretty soon. If you do not want to have that, you can simply shut it off and remove it from your presets, but it's going to be very easy to add. So Darius? All right, let's do it. I just wanted to, I'm going to go sort of work my way backwards through some of those things. So this is what we were talking about with the, the feature that we're rolling out. We're in the process. We're doing some final QA on, which is the, the progressive profiling of adding these data points to the CRM. So you can see it asked for the first name and it presented the CTA, asked for the last name, presented the CTA, reminding me like, hey, this is the action you need to take. Phone number. And then it actually also asked for additional context. And then it provided an updated answer. It said, because I gave it, here's my goal. I gave you all my information. Here's my goal. And then it took all of that and it gave me an updated answer. And it says, now that I understand your goal, it remembered my name and it told me everything it needed to know about. And now this is not some custom answer, guys, that I programmed. Like I didn't come in and tell the AI assistant to say, if somebody says their goal is sending video email, then answer this way. That never happened, right? This is just analyzing the Dub website, the information that's available and coming up with this answer when I tell them that my goal is to send video email. So this is, as long as you guys have a website or a robust training material, meaning you just go through and talk about everything in your business, you, that would be enough. Like literally a web page about stuff. And then you, you, and the other thing, guys, I want to talk about mindset a little bit before I get into more technical, the mindset of this technology really, really important here, guys, is I want you to think of this like you are hiring an employee, a very intelligent, like Mensa level employee, very, very smart person, but they have zero context about your business. They have no idea what your products and features and service are. They're a freaking genius, but they don't know any of this stuff yet. So you have to go and train them on those things. You also have to continue to invest in the education of this thing. As your business changes, your product, your service offering, any of those things changes, the AI needs to be updated. Otherwise, it simply won't know, right? If you leave it out of the circle, it can be a genius over in a bubble, but it needs to be in the circle. And so yeah. I really want you guys to take that mentality and that approach with it is it, this is different from other technologies. It's not like a set it and forget it. It is a continual investment because just like you and just like your business, things are going to continue to change, hopefully mm -hmm. improve. And we want to make sure that the AI is in that same thread of, oh, we're, things are changing. I have new buttons, new links, and the AI is going to be a constant team member, right? You don't you don't change your business without telling your team members things are changing. And so I want you guys to take that same approach in using the AI is this is not a uh, just set it up one time forever and then never touch it again. Um, now, depending on your business, like some people stay the same for a lot of long time, like in real estate, your main product offering and stuff is going to be the same for many years, unless you decide to niche down or something like I'm going to work with veterans only, whatever, then you could update that. So some of your guys' businesses can be more of a set it and forget it, where you just train it one time. And for many years, it can it can use that same information. A lot of the time, though, you're going to need to continue to invest, you know, first look at its conversations, make sure it's answering everything how you want, but having that mindset of continual improvement, just like your employee, if you ever hired somebody or you've been an employee, right? You know what it's like to start and like know nothing. And you're like, God, I wish somebody would just hold my hand and show me a couple things. And that's how the AI feels. And just imagine, I know it's not a person, but just, just yeah. A... Hey, hey, Darius, it's not Mensa, it's Mencia. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. 
Um, Darius, can you show us how it populates the information in the CRM, the dub CRM, and then obviously how to potentially someone can yeah. integrate that into their own CRM? Exactly, exactly. And also so, the chat, the, the, sorry, the tag, the AI chat tag, how that can trigger automation. Yes. So there's there's a couple things, guys. There's first the actual com conversations themselves. So when you want to go follow up with these conversations, they're going to exist in several places in the regular dub messaging, right? This dub messaging feature, this is not new. This has been a part of dub. So this messaging portal is, is already existed. It's just going to be enhanced with SIA now. So you're going to notice a couple of things, guys. First, there is the switch here for SIA. If you come and wanted to monitor a conversation, which you will be notified when it's happening, you can come and shut SIA off. You can say, hey, SIA, I don't want you to talk anymore to this person. I want to talk to this person. So there's an easy switch for that. You could also, if this person is just totally, you could block them for whatever reason. Um, you could also tag team. Like I can come and write something in here and SIA can also still be a part of the conversation. So this is very easy to come and in interact and engage or intercept is the word we used if you want to intercept your SIA conversation. Um, this is also available on the mobile app. So regardless of where you are, you can view, monitor, intercept, interrupt, tag team, co-pilot, whatever, with your SIA conversations at any time. So this is available on the dashboard and the mobile app, a click away. That's the first piece, your conversations where you can analyze, view them, interrupt them, et cetera. Um, another, remind, we also talked about the, uh, what other part there? Oh, the CRM piece. Yeah, so I showed you guys the, the, the question and answer sort of conversation and how it was taking my data. And what it's actually doing is it's going to be adding that to the dub CRM. So you can see I did several tests, some of which I populated my name, first name, last name, some of which I didn't, right? And so that's what we're going to see there is the different data points that were populated, the tags that were added. All of this is customizable as well. Which data points is, are, is it collecting? Which tags are being added? All of this is customizable per SIA, per AI assistant, so that one assistant can be collecting first name and mobile. And it's adding this tag, which goes and triggers a specific automation. A different SIA can do something else. So this is the idea with SIA, is it kind of can replace or be an alternative or a supplement to the other buttons. So just one, one quick reminder, guys, this is what it looked like before with just, oh, sorry, I don't have the page open. It was just the buttons, right? Book a time. So now we're talking about having the addition. You can still have your schedule buttons, but you are having the, the assistant as a supplement to this page to drive more engagements. At, at this time, I also want to show you guys with, with some stats. You know, there, there's a couple of research points. And again, because it's early, this data is still new. Um, the data shows people that engage with an AI chat on a landing page are 16 times more likely to make a purchasing decision. So that means people that land on your page and go to interact with your SIA are 16 times more likely to convert. This is the study. The study from this is when anyone interacts with an AI chat on a landing page, which is exactly what this is. And again, this is early data, um, less than a year old, right? So things can change in a year or two's time, but we are still at a time where there's a massive opportunity to increase our conversions by having these interactive chat assistants. And it's just a matter of making sure it has the right answers, not pollution, right? Don't go just add so much there so that you're covering uh, bases. There is also, guys, there's some intelligence where it can scan the internet as well. So someone had a question of like, what if it doesn't know the answer? First, it can scan the internet and find answers. You can also set it up to where it doesn't. You can, you can program it to say, I don't know that answer. And instead, I'd prefer you get in touch with first name, Darius, the, you know, the, the dub user. So that is customizable as well. It does have the option to scan the internet for data. Or you can have it, you know, like your FAQs, you can program it where answers can be custom. So it can be, it can be smart and go dig through the internet like a person. Or it, like I said, imagine it's your salesperson. Would you want your salesperson, if they don't know the answer, do you want them to go scour the internet and find the answer? Or do you want your salesperson to say, you know what? I don't know that answer right now, but my boss does and he'll be in touch with you shortly. You make that decision just like you would if you hired a salesperson. And you will make that same decision when you're implementing the individual SIAs across your, your account and your business.
So that was awesome, Darius. That was really yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Think, think about this, Joe. Welcome. There is a replay. We are going to be sharing the link. Um, thank you so much. Uh, here's the thing. This data, it doesn't end in the in the chat. It doesn't end in the message. It starts to mine. This is this is where we call enriching CRM enrichment. Okay, and this is a very it's a kind of a techie term, but it's a very powerful concept because as we are interacting and as we are prospecting leads, we are adding information to our CRM. So Dub is a fully functioning CRM. That's what we have built. We also integrate with third party CRM. So if you are using your own CRM, that's OK. There's a lot of different ways to, in, to uh, interact and to engage and to integrate your CRM. So just throw in our support.dub.com, you know, how to get that integration, or if you have a specific question, throw it in the chat and we can follow up with responses. Um, we're, we're, we're coming up on the end. We've got about four minutes. Uh, is there any, any other questions that you guys want to blitz us, you know, throw them in the Q and a, we promised to get to them. Darius, did we miss anything? I, I didn't get a chance to look at the QA much. I was mostly in the chat. Yeah, no, I, I think we had a lot of really good questions in the, in the, in the chat. I think more came into the, the, this, the Q and a after. So, um, yeah, I mean, let's, let's just power through a few more of these things, guys. Okay, cool. And then, and by the way, thank you guys for putting your questions in the Q and a, because what we do is if we do not get to your question, we will go and follow up and then send and you an email or in the in the final uh you know broadcast where we send the recording we'll just provide some faq so we will promise to make sure to get this information to you guys absolutely okay Ru Ru ruben i'm gonna work my way through through here okay okay all right let's go i'm gonna go i'm gonna go uh rat rattle them off does sia do it in different languages yes if you talk to sia in spanish it can answer you in spanish how much do you charge to set it up we don't charge anything to set it up we don't have a paid process for setting up SIA right now. It is a uh, a la carte, you know, come come self-service, if you will, at this time. This is going to be changing moving forward in the future. There's not a pricing set up for it and there's not a done for you service. And by the way, George, that's actually a great question. You know, we pride ourselves on the amount of support that we provide when you're setting up your video and your pages. This is one of those emerging technologies, guys, that we cannot do the optimization calls for. Just because you can you can spend a lot of time coming up with the questions and then trying it and saying, well, I don't like this answer. And so, so we we don't provide the optimization support inside of there yet. Like this is still emerging. We're going to be developing this technology. We're going to be refining it, making it easier to use, uh, harder to make mistakes and stuff. So eventually, we're going to be increasing the amount of uh, done for you support that we can provide with it. But right now, because it's in this sort of alpha, beta, you know, preliminary stages, we're asking that you guys go get your hands dirty, go play with it. Of course, come to us if you have questions, if you have any feedback, response, question, anything. We want to hear all that, but we don't have a current like set it up for you service. We may in the near future, but could currently we don't 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 offer that. Uh, I mean, I, I'll just I'll just say this real quick. It's it's really easy to set this up. I mean, yeah, you can do it in yeah. ten minutes. I I've set I've set so many up of these up by now. It takes about ten minutes to do a, a version one of them. There's a great training video in it. Ina, if you could reshare that link, please. Just watch that video. I spent I spent a good amount of time creating that training video. It's about 10 minutes. Just watch that. Press pause, rewind, you know, take screenshots, do whatever you need to do to learn how to do that. It's pretty simple. You know, you add your you add your resource links, like your website, your Calendly page, whatever you got. Throw a couple of FAQs in there and then tell it what you want to do. And it's done. Add it to your presets. It's on your page. It's magic. So it, it works really well. Um the integration into your CRM, you know, adding the contact information that happens automatically, you know, for advanced um, automation users, that's something that we'll do another webinar in on in the future on how to actually create uh, automations from this, because it does create a tag within the CRM, which is called AI chat. So for you tech geek out, geeks out there that know what tags are and automation and all that, you will notice some of that cool stuff. I love to geek out on that stuff. So I will have right. a webinar in the future. Um, the uh, Darius. No, yeah, I was just, just reading some more of these questions here. Um, a couple of those related to the CRM, Michael and Calvin. So yes, it can grab missing data. It can populate the CRM. It can update the contacts. So that's exactly what it is designed to do. It is lead capture, uh, data enrichment, uh, data qualification, right? It can ask questions, populate forms, essentially. You can even just present a form that has all the questions and that can then update the CRM. So yes, a number of ways it's integrated into the CRM. Um, and that was that one. 
I think that's everything in the chat. Let me just check the Q and A here. Um, okay, what's the best way to test it? The best way to test it is to open it in an incognito window. So you guys will notice that it is by default is designed to not work when you're testing it for yourself. So like if I open my own SIA and I go try to talk with it, you're gonna see it says, you can't talk with your own SIA. So instead open a new browser tab, a Safari instead of Chrome, a different Chrome profile, it just needs to make sure that there's no cache history of your interaction with SIA. That's the best way to test it because it will cache, it will remember. So if the same person goes to talk to SIA on the same browser, it's already gonna know who they are, the conversation that's had, that conversation history is gonna be there. And so for a full legitimate test, you wanna make sure it's kind of a fresh conversation. Uh, so incog, separate browser, separate device, just make sure your cache isn't set up. Go ahead. So I have a quick question. For those folks that are still with us, is there anyone that's not on a paid account yet? If oh, you yeah. want to upgrade your dev <laughs> account, please put one in the comments because we would love to support you and onboard you and bring you into the family, bring you into our community. We've got a great offer that we'd like to extend to you. Just put one in the comments if you're interested in upgrading to a pro plan, to a pro plus. Henry, thank you so much for that recommendation. Testimonials, case studies, they mean everything to us. We work so hard to your for your success. So Bernard, we got you. Thank you so much. Um, Frederick, we'll take care of you. Jeffrey, really appreciate appreciate you. Thank you for the interest. We'll make sure that we take care of you guys. VIP treatment. We we'll we are terrible email. about that, Ruben. Like we always release. We we spend so long working so hard <laughs> on this technology. Yeah, we build it and we like give it away for free, and then like we don't even try to sell it. To anybody. Yeah, we're just like no, come I mean, get it, guys. <laughs> hey, you know what, Darius? Now see it. See it. will do a better job at selling. Right. Us yeah. Exactly. So he is going to say, "Here's will, here's our checkout link. Here's the link. Please purchase." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, so we don't keep bringing those ones in. We want to service you guys. It's a cool experience. I mean, there's an optimization call. We set you up. We set you up with a strategy. We teach you how to host an infomercial like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. The other thing I was going to say was, folks, I don't know another tech company that offers live training five days a week in Zoom, where you get to meet leadership, a co-founder of the company. Darius is in there all the time. I come in every once in a while. Such an experience for you guys to get you guys set up for success. We call Darius the Oracle because he knows everything. He can, whatever your industry you're in, whatever you're working through, come and ask questions in those calls. We will help you go and set up your SIA. We will help you. Right. It's as Darius said, it's hard to do this job for you, but it's kind of easy if you watch the training video. And if you and if you run into any issues, we will support you guys. So if there's anyone else that does want to upgrade, throw one in the comments. We will take care of you guys. Darius, Rob, anything else that we're missing here? Gratitude, guys. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. Now I'm just working my way through the, these last little things. The, the, there's a couple of good questions. Um let me see if there's anything that we haven't answered. Does it use chat? It uses chat, the latest version of chat GPT. So that's a good question. Yes, the latest version. Uh, can you set rules about what you don't want it to say? That would be the, the document thing that we talked about where you're, you have a Word document and you put some just rules and say, this is your resource link. So yes, it can do that. Uh, George, if they're visiting the video page as part of a campaign, yes. So if you sent the campaign data, now it doesn't do that right now today, but George, that's an excellent question. And yes, it will be able to do that. When you send them a campaign, their contact data is in the thing. It's going to know who they are. It doesn't do that today, though, George. I, we we had that discussion. It's coming. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for that one. That that one's pretty easy. So, um, Bob, can you import FAQ from? Yes, yeah, so we talked about that one. You can import. Uh, wait, can you import FAQ from? A, okay, so no. So actually, sorry, the FAQs are each individual because they have a question and an answer, and they're a, a little individual button. So Bob, it doesn't work so well to like just take a doc and paste into. You just cut, you'd have to paste six times or 10 times or what, depending on how many FAQs and answers you have. If it's five FAQs and answers, you're copying and pasting 10 times, right? Once for each question and answer. So uh, Charles, do you have to, okay, we talked about that training assistant separately. You, you train one, clone it. There's a clone button. So you can pull from the master very easily. Uh, import that info into, yes, yeah, SIA or IRA. You, you're going to add the documents to the web pages of eventually documents right now, just web pages, uh, Francois. And when we meet with a client, how we see their conversation. Okay, great, great question, Charles. That's what we talked about. Uh, when you guys want to come track the conversations, that's in this little conversation tool right there or on the mobile app. You will find the individual contacts. 
the video pages. So that's the video page. That's the contact. That's all very easy to track who your AI is chatting with. Um, Owen, different different plans. Yeah, exactly. Different C is for different plans. Exactly. Um, when we customize the model, complexity. Uh, yeah. Wait, I want it to turn pretty low so it's not making something up. Yeah. So George, uh, George L., you would give it the exact resources. If your website is using elevated complex jargon, it is going to use elevated complex jargon. If your oh, website okay. or your resources are talking like a toddler or a kindergartner, it's going to talk <laughs> like a toddler or kindergartner. So right. it's, it's it's all about the resources that you train it on. It's very it's very smart, but it's also, I don't know what the word for that is. It's just like, it's like Adaptive. This. Yeah, it's but it's also like this. Like it only sees what you show it. So if you show Myopic, it a toddler yeah. language and you say you're a toddler, and it thinks it's a toddler. <laughs> so yes, it's, yeah. it's like this. It won't. It doesn't unless you tell it like, "Hey, I want you to pretend you're something. Like pretend you are an attorney, and it's going to pretend it's an attorney. It's going to scan the internet and do things like that." So yeah, the one one of the things that I always recommend in the FAQs that you're providing is make sure that the tone of the language is 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 language that you're comfortable with um, when you speak to a prospect or a customer. So just if you are using AI to write that FAQ, that list of FAQs, which you can very easily do in Ira or ChatGPT, just do a scan on it and make sure it's, it's your language. And that you, we always do a scan. We always add an HI to the AI afterwards. Absolutely. Don't, don't forget that step, guys, too. Yeah, um, like Charles has some questions about like, how do we go, Make sure that it's doing the right answers, right? Um, that you got to monitor. Like you wouldn't just hire an employee and never look at what they're doing, right? You'd go like scrutinize their behavior, especially in the first couple of weeks and like make sure they're doing their job. So that that's what this is like. Um, the, another, the other opportunity, guys, is this is right now, it's it's like in, an, in a little bubble in Dub. Eventually, and even you guys could go put this on social, like currently, right? You can go post to social and then in the link to your social post, is your SIA where it can qualify yeah. capture leads like straight from social. It can take a social post, ask them questions, make sure they're fully qualified, put their stuff into the CRM trigger and automation. It can do all of that. So it is the perfect ability to integrate AI chat, your conversational sales assistant into any vehicle, any channel, DMs, posts, email, text message, website, eventually a uh, website's coming likely. So, um, you could also embed a dub video page on your website and then that can have the thing. So you could technically do it today. Nice. Good. Uh, I think that's everything. I've made it to the last Q and a, let me go back and check the chat one more time. I think we made it through everything though. Oh, <laughs> difference between Sia and Ira. Ira is your writing assistant. It's designed to be programmed and help you write. Sia is your sales assistant where it's designed to help you close deals, qualify, capture leads, perform sales activities. So good question. And, and yeah, we're incorporating, and that's actually more of the difference between like chat GPT and SIA. You can use Ira like chat GPT. It's, those are very similar. SIA is totally different though. It's front, it's customer facing. Ira and chat GPT are not ever customer facing. Um, can we implement SIA for our clients? Don, that's a great question. Technically, if you wanted to, you could. If you had your own clients and they're like, hey, I want this AI assistant thing, you can go build a SIA for them on behalf of them. And like if you're a digital marketer, for example, you have agency clients, you can go set up a SIA for them and let them go at it. <laughs> could, be, could be possible. I would definitely charge them for something though. Don't, don't uh. give it away. Um, Kenyatta, I, I made a test SIA and it was super easy. Wow, thank you for that. Okay, guys, you, would please. you like would you like to share your link, Kenyatta? If you'd like to share your link, we can take a quick look at it if you're comfortable. Awesome. Share your video link. We can give you some real time feedback. Oh, perfect. Oh, there's Kevin. Kevin wanted he dropped his in first. He's like, oh, let's take first. a look. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Let's see. Let's see. So we got a and Ruben, we were talking about the different justifications. So Kevin's got this this uh different justification here. And and so so that's a note for us. We gotta have Sia go full full width when, oh, they, do, I got you. when they do left justified. So Ina, Ina, help us take a note on that. <laughs> so that's what it's gonna do. Now, Kevin, I have not uh we're gonna we're gonna test it. So you I see you populated some some custom questions here. How can Edge help my business? 
like what the heck's edge i want to know yeah let's see what is edge how can it help my business it's going to take a second it's going to scan the answer and then it's going to say boom here's what edge is so tailor brand we align branding strategies with your specific business goals customer and employee engagement and drive growth and then I ask about your, so then now it's going to, it's going to qualify me, right? It's going to say, well, who are you specifically? Let me give you a better answer of what edge can do. Once you tell me a little bit about yourself, because, and let's be real guys, like the salesperson that says, uh, you, they're like, Hey, I, I want to talk like, Oh, well, we're the perfect solution for you. It's like, you don't even know anything about me yet. How do you know that it's the perfect solution? We all know that's kind of BS, right? So the AI is designed to do the opposite of that. It's going to ask a question that guys, let me know something actually about you. Tell me about your business. Tell me something more so then I can give an updated answer. So let's do that really quick. We're going to say, um, and then I would, I would love to get some, I would love to get some feedback. Um, Kevin from you, like, what do you think so far? Put it, put it in the chat. What do you think so far about its answers? I mean, this is all contingent on the FAQs that you, that you provided, but what do you think? Do you, what, do you see the potential here? Do you have any feedback? Kenyatta, same for you. You guys are early adopters on this technology. We're all ears. Let's improve it together. And then Kevin, if, if you don't mind, look at this most recent response. So I, I know you personally, Kevin, because we've talked and, and I know you're working with a lot of agents. So uh, I said, I'm a real estate agent. And this is, this is exactly what it's going to tell you if you as a real estate agent are talking to your AI. And it's going to say, as a real estate agent, the edge branding solutions can do this. And of course, it, it updated the answers, guys. It gave new, better answers based on listening because that's what it's doing. Like it's a good salesperson. It's listening. It's asking the right questions. It's listening. And then it's giving feedback, updated answers based on what you told it. So Kevin, if you your know, mic is on, I don't know. Did we turn his mic on? <laughs> we probably didn't click allow to talk. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think we did. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. We're like, okay, Kevin, here, where yeah. are you? <laughs> I'm here. Can you guys there you hear go, me? buddy. All right. Welcome. Yeah, wait, yeah, Kevin, so can we turn, I, I do you want to turn your video on, really Kevin? Me, What's that? Can, do you want to turn your video on, Kevin? I, I have to make him a panelist. Sure. Did you do that already? Yeah, he said, sure, you can do it. Okay, let me, panelist. And then I think, uh, Kevin, you should see it said rejoining his panelists. There you go. Kenyatta, if you want to come on stage. Yeah, can y'all? I'm gonna, I'm gonna click a button for you to come on too if you're still with us here. Can, can yeah? Oh, there's a couple of you. I don't know which one to boost. I'm gonna, I'll do all three oh. of them. It's saying I can't start my video. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix you right now. There you go. All right. All right. Now your coat. You should be able to turn it on. There you Beautiful. go. Okay. Right on. Welcome, buddy. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So the um, the thing that I, I need to refine it a little bit more, I need to get to the gift portion of, of what we're talking about. I mean, I'm, I, some of those other things are ways for me to kind of draw them in. Uh, yeah. And I'm, I am, you know, exploring some affiliate uh, offerings as well, you know, such as Dub. Right. Uh, you know, offering those things to my clients as well. Uh, but I think that this is an amazing start. I can teach it. I, can, I, I see how I can refine it. Yeah. I've been using Ira a lot to get, nice. uh, you know, to get content, to write scripts. Um, you know, sometimes I just get an idea in my head and I'll throw it into Ira and I'll copy and paste it into a doc for later on. Love so it. I have this whole kind of swipe file of things that I've used Ira for. Um, and I feel like this i so i have an understanding of where we're going with this and i right. think uh it's gonna it's gonna definitely be a, a, a helpful extra tool it'll never take the place of you know phone calls right right thing but man it will definitely lead people closer to that personal touch when they might have bounced sooner you know that that's yeah. exactly it guy and, that, and that, that's that i love that context there kevin because Guys, this is not going to completely replace traditional activities, right? That's not what it's designed to do. That's not what we're claiming it's doing. We're advising you to add it as one more tool because there is no silver bullet in life, in business, in anything, right? It's all a bunch of little pieces and strategies and things that all come together to make a beautiful story. And that's really what this is. It's another piece of that puzzle to enhance it, to make it better, to capture the low-hanging fruit that didn't convert from the first they didn't, the, the copy, the subject, the video, the button, this is one more, it's another safety net, another safety net, another net. 
So it's exactly that. And, and it's just another tool to design to increase the conversions from your guys' efforts. But but Kevin, I love that expectation, right? Does not mean the human is, we still need you. <laughs> you still got to put your elbow grease in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kevin, one of the questions, if there's anyone, well, if there's anyone else that wants to come on stage, just Ken, Kenyatta came on too. She, she's ready. Oh, to go. cool. Yeah. Kevin, I was just, here's what I'd like to know, Kevin, you know, about you, no one knows more than, than, uh, about your business than you. So can you either share your screen and start to ask Thea questions, just one or two really difficult questions, or just tell Darius who has the screen sharing. And I would just like to know what type of questions you would ask it that you have not yet trained it on mm. and how it would do on those answers. Is it, uh, okay. how's it going to do? Let's, let's test it. Yeah. Let's, you know, let's out. put it to the test. Incognito window here. We, we always say, try to break it. Yeah, and then we say, it. that's our term. Try to break it. Like yeah. what question can I ask this thing? That's just gonna like, I don't want to be completely irrelevant. Yeah. Right. I don't want to just say, how much does a dog cost? Like, I, I want to have it be like it's a customer, but maybe not an educated huh. customer or yeah. a, a lead that's right. like confused or something, right? What, what yeah. might a confused lead? Um, Kevin, Kevin, did you want I'm trying to figure out how to share my screen? Here, Kevin, oh. let, let us just, oh. uh, Darius, maybe you should just do the screen share. Just do, Yeah, just yeah, do I'll, 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 I'll use your the vehicle you, you gave us there, Kevin. So I'll, I'll show the one that you, you shared and we'll, we'll try to break it here. What, what's a confusing question? somebody might ask you personally that you didn't train the AI on. That's not like an FAQ or something. Okay. All right. This is, this is a, a silly one. Love it. All right. Okay. Um, what about superstitions about gifting knives? Uh, superstition. I don't even know how to spell superstitious. Super. Yeah, yeah. AI does. Right. <laughs> what about superstitions <laughs> about gifting about knives? gifting knives? There are there are superstitions out there where you have to give a penny and I have a whole solution for it. So and I don't think I've tried I don't think the stuff I put in today has let's see. Yeah, this is always curious because it's a great if, question. What if, if you gave your question? website and you have anything anywhere published about this objection handler? It should be able to find it and and do it. So look, yeah, I said I couldn't find the stuff on superstitions about gifting knife. However, a common superstition is that it can cut the relationship. To counter this, it's suggested that include a small coin with the gift. Weird. <laughs> and they can yeah, pay the so gift. Weird. We actually do that. We 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 pre-handle that. I have I have a little card that that people the realtors tape a penny to. So when wow. they give it, if they are if they encounter that, it pre-handles the the objection so that, so that, that i, I had no really idea that. that was the handler to that like that's okay amazing superstition with oh, knife you got to put yeah, a coin with it it did it so, yeah, i, I, I really that. like the I honesty in this that. sorry mm -hmm. go ahead kevin say that again i i really like the honesty in this with the ai because it says i couldn't find it, it's basically saying i wasn't kevin didn't train me but I do know this information since I'm, I'm Mencia, you know, and it's and it's providing this thing, which it sounds like you guys already do. So uh, this is impressive to me, Kevin. Yeah, I, I I like it, and once I refine it a little bit, it'll even you know take it a step further. So that'll be that'll be great. It'll tell it'll say not only is this one way to handle it, but Kevin has a, a special right. Way for you to it'll say yeah. instead of the I couldn't find, it'll say a common superstition is that gifting a knife can cut. Here's why, or here's how we're overcoming that. We include a special coin with every, like whatever answer you Beautiful. use. Beautiful. Go do that. So yeah. Right. Well, here's here's the other thing. Let me turn my camera on. I think this is really important. The other thing that we need to remember here is that the data that we mine from the questions from the conversation. Oh, <laughs> whoops! <laughs> <laughs> His internet just died there. <laughs> That's super rare. Um, Anyway, uh, Kenyatta, I, I just made you co-host. I think you can turn on now. Yes. Uh, so Rob, Rob, Ruben will be back in a minute. Um, but yeah, I would like to see uh, see your example as well. Did, did you get Did you get one ready? Put the link in the the chat. Okay. Um, okay. Let's let's click it. Let me see here. Up a little bit. Freedom and okay, there it is. Okay. And I I literally just made it while I was trying to. No, I know I got it. So this is zero <laughs> zero lead time, guys. Two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Awesome. So, so I just really quickly grabbed a video that I just already had and yep. I just, I used Ira yep. to create the frequently asked questions, wow. which I didn't even know I could do that. So yep. I just a button and it, uh, it said, Bloop, and it gave me 20 questions. And then I quickly put them in yep. one at a time. I had to copy, paste, copy, paste. Yep. And then uh, I hit the button to view it and it said, no, you can't do that here. Go to an incognito <laughs> window. Yeah. Which I did. Right. <laughs> and then I sent it to my assistant, who's the other Kenyatta in here. Okay. Okay. Um, That's who the other like, ones. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, try this out, you know, because we're both kind of learning at the same time. Yep. And I don't use dub as much as I need to. So I was asking the question about, you know, can I like integrate this totally. to go high level, which is my real plat, not real, but yeah, my you, you got my video on that too, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, and I want to start using this so much more. Yeah. So this is as far as I got. Yeah. And yeah. It, was, it only took me maybe seven. I mean, it was very, very quick. Yeah, so. right. And now, now let's go get a test. Now, like she just gave guys information, five, five minutes spent setting this thing up. So yeah. admittedly, not a lot of time. She actually used the auto generation and everything. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the quality of the, of, the, of the FAQs, right? What service does Freedom Empire Consulting? Who is Kenyatta? What is the mission? What is the behavior? What is behavioral superpower? Like, I, I, I'm guessing these are on there. I want to know what this one is. What's the behavioral superpower? <laughs> It's a unique set of traits and behaviors that once identified can harness, oh, let me minimize the questions. And then you recommend visiting the website. So that's what your CTA was right now is the visit the website. I don't know that I did that intentionally. I just was putting in the website link because I didn't know. No, no, yeah, speak. right. But th that's what, and then so like this, this even without, wouldn't be terrible if they sent it to your website, right? I mean, no. there's probably a better option like a calendar or call me or something. Right. Like, I don't know that it asked me for this. I don't know that there was a place where I understood that since I put my website, that that's where it would be going. You yeah, no. Like, so so the, uh, good point. And that is right in the uh, creation menu. There's your, oh, wrong one. There is your desired CTA. That's this one right here. Okay. So the, I think then, I left it blank or maybe it, Assume. Yeah. So, so if, if you left it blank, then it would, it would probably going to come up with something. It's going to say, Hey, why don't you visit the website or something? Okay. So, but if you, if you, as long as you populate that and the title, it's going to have the context it needs where it's going to say, why don't you consider registering for the webinar? Or this, this, in this case it would say book a time with Rob. Here's the link. So. Okay. So like when, um, when, uh, Duff, you know, Michael from Duff, whatever, yeah. it was saying book an, um, book a session, book a session. That's what was there. That exactly. It we yeah. took Michael Scott's Calendly, we put it here, and and the CTA title was Book a Time with Michael, and that was oh. it. And that's why it continues to present that that sales activity. Okay, so perfect. Yeah, I didn't explicitly say that, but it must have assumed to send it to the right. website if you don't. Right. Know. So what, what's Kenyatta? What's going to be your your URL? Do you have a booking link, or what do you have? Well, I, I have all the things. I I just for <laughs> this for this. Like, what would you pick? I didn't specifically say, and we were just talking about, I think you may have hopped off and came back on. It just put my uh, website. Yeah, I but saw Yes, that, yeah. I want them to book an appointment. Yes, I want them to grab my freebie. Yes, I whatever. I see how I can do that for whatever the thing is. But in the example, when he has my screen up, it was just automatically putting my website as the CTA. That wasn't a bad thing, yeah. but I just barely so made can it you, Can you go ahead and update it with? With, with what? No, he froze again. <laughs> he was going to say, I'll update it with, with, with what, what your actual desired CTA might be. Like, is it going to be a calendar or is it going to be a... Oh, just theme? to kind of test it to show... Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, yeah, I, and also, we want to know, like, what are, what are people's desired actions? Like, ours is usually the calendar. Almost always, it's the calendar. We want to book a time so we can have a sales meeting or, or you know, consultation or a customer support call. That's, that's our most common CTA. What about for okay. you? Okay. So Darius, let me give, let me share this particular thing. Yes, it's oftentimes my calendar, but right now yeah. me and my assistant are working on updating some uh, lead magnets that can be delivered like PDF style, like a, yeah. a B SWAT uh, strategy worksheet. Love so it. it would be, it would be that I want them to get that worksheet. So it would, it would, that oh, would download the, the worksheet. Yeah. Here's the right. URL for the yes. PDF. And as long as you have the, the, okay, you can host the PDF on dub. So they could click with it or you could host it anywhere else you wanted to host it. Okay. You would need the online URL for that, that so that it has to be publicly shareable, right? It could be a Google doc link or whatever, sure. but it has to be publicly accessible. And then you can present that as the desired CTA. And then the text, which okay. says, download my guide here. And then perfect the link and it presents Perfect. The download. Yep. 
so I just logged back in. I'm going back to the asset that I created, the, the webinar CTA. or yep. yeah, the, C the CTA. And I just yep. called the webinar test because that's what you yep. were calling it. Right? Yep. So yep. I'm going back in there and now I'm scrolling down and I definitely see where it says um, desire CTA title. And I just put test CTA. And then I just, I must've just popped in my link there. My, my oh, there you go. Yeah. So, so I did actually put that in there. Got I didn't it, got remember it. doing that, but I see oh, how I can add my calendar link or anything right. else, you know, right there. And it might say something different for yep. test purposes. I'm just going to put a calendar link right now and change Perfect. it and then see, it'll probably change that on the spot. I'm assuming. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. um, so these let me changes do that. happen in real time as well, guys. So if you are your AI is out there, and you, you go change answers or change resources or something, it's going to get new information in real time. So if you like, so it could literally be mid conversation. Somebody asks a question and you change an answer before they, and then, you know, they ask a new question. It's going to give the new answer. So this is just like everything else on a dub page, guys, it's real time. You change a button, they go to visit that page. They're going to get the new button, right? Okay. So I just did that and I'm going to hit save and close. Yep. Um, and then I'm gonna revisit your page here, and we're okay, gonna we're gonna see if it closed. It says success. Okay, it says it's been saved. All right. Who's Kenyatta? Who are you? And then okay, so then <laughs> it says wait, wait, ask about your situation. Um, um, who do you usually work with? Like entrepreneurs or? Uh, uh, yeah, put coaches? entrepreneurs. That's fine. you spelled that mm. wrong. yeah i spot but i switched there. swap the ease that's fantastic as an entrepreneur here's where here's how she can help book a time there you go okay so i have i have a question can, am i frozen can you hear no, me you're good we can hear you now okay um so my question is i would prefer to use a business coach that works with a specific industry or profile type can you provide information on what type of clients Kenyatta works with. Hmm. You see where I'm going with that? It's not trained on that. No. It's not trained. It doesn't, it doesn't know who your specific target audience is. Right. So it doesn't know. So first of all, I think it's a good, I think it's a good FAQ. That's a side note. Right. But yeah. what what does AI do in this situation when we ask it a question? It's left to its own vices. You well, know? One more time. What was it, Ruben? You said... Uh, um, I would like to know what type of clients Kenyatta works with. That's probably a good question. I'm trying to think. Was that in my list of FAQs? I, I right, think no, it, pro probably not, right? That's it's kind of random. So work with a, works with a diverse... Um, range of clients, including individuals, families, small businesses, and corporate clients. They're focused on enhancing behavioral insights, personal development, making them well-suited for entrepreneurs and business leaders looking to improve their skills. What specific areas are you looking for in a specialist? Yeah. And that actually was a, a frequently asked question. I remember now that was- Oh, one. nice. Yeah. Good job, Kenyatta. You're, the, you're well, awesome. Yeah. That's I, amazing. Ira, Ira did that. I didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Ira did it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Ira gave Oh, me. that's- Okay, but still, I mean, you you're the you're the boss. Okay, right, you're the you're pulling the triggers here. And but but what I want to show you guys though is it does the additional qualifications too. This this guys took a lot of back and forth testing and and development to get it to this point where because it's it's there's a first there's a lot there's different schools of thoughts right of like how sales conversations should go. Um, the old school method is like buy now. I don't care whatever like just buy it. You need it. And and now it's more like a consultative approach. And no one's going to buy anything from you until they know that you understand who they are. You understand all their pain points and all their problems and stuff. And AI has to, it, it can't do that unless you train it to do that. And so the only way the your audience, your leads and customers are going to feel or think that this thing knows anything about them is if it asks the questions. Because then, yeah. then they know, okay, it asks me who I am. Well, I'm an entrepreneur in the health sector. And it's like, well, entrepreneurs in the health sector can benefit from this product and service by XYZ. So then it it handles that qualification. Um, and it's, it's, it's designed to do that. That's actually a master level, like our internal design guys that's doing that additional qualification because that's really where most of the work that we did went is converting it from your chat GPT to sales GPT, where it's presenting yeah. relevant information, capturing information that you're designed. And 
moving the conversation forward, progressing the because Chad GPT doesn't care about that. It's not trying to progress anything. It's like, here's your answer. Goodbye. This one is yeah. not that. It's, it's designed to progress the conversation to the point where you would want it to land, right? Book a time in my meeting or book a time in my calendar. You're not ready for that. Let me answer some questions. But eventually here, now you're ready to book a time. So that, that, that that's where all the research and development that we did, guys, was turning it into a sales assistant versus just the regular, uh, you know, chat GPT type stuff. Well, here here's another one, Darius. Um, how do I know if I can afford to work with Kenyatta? Yeah, <laughs> that, that's an interesting one. And guys, that, that'll that totally be an FAQ thing. Like, wow. I, I don't know how it's going to do that. Um, how, let's see. Oops, I'm going to pause you for a second. Did you, Kenyatta, did you, did you provide any information on pricing? I don't think so. Um, yeah. I don't, that was one of the FAQs that, you know, Ira gave me because I was just entering in really, really fast. That's cool. So, that's, that, yeah, that's a good so, starting point. And it's probably not really on my website because my website's not the greatest yet. So I don't know. And then we'll you don't have that. like a, here's the one price checkout situation. Coaching's all different. Like your coaching is no. going to be different if you're working with an organization versus a, yes. a solo individual. So, okay, let's see what it did. Determining affordability invoices, understanding the specific service you need and the pricing related to those services. While exact costs can vary depending on the type of engagement, whether it's coaching, training, or speaking, Freedom Empire Consulting offers personalized solutions tailored to your needs. To get precise information, book a call. Book a call. <laughs> so here yeah, we go. and that's exactly right. And, and I, there was a great comment here. It's malpractice to give a prescription without the proper diagnosis. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so, yeah. and that that's exactly what this did here. So it said, hey, thing prices can vary a lot, and you know, depending on what you're needing, the price can vary. Book a time yeah. to, to learn further, and that's a, yeah. that I think is a perfect catch-all for when you didn't populate pricing, <laughs> right? Um, nice. So very cool. Yeah. Is there anyone else that wants to share their link? I think we're, I think we're wrapped, right? Well, I think I have one more hand up. Richard, Richard Miller. Oh, real quick. Sorry, time? real quick, Darius. I have a business directory with, will Sia read all the pages on the website? Sia does not uh, do sublinks. It's only one link in because imagine how much d disparity and conflict there could be if Sia is scanning and spidering all the websites. So if you have the ability to put everything on one web page, like you might have to build that page yourself and put publish it on your site, then yes, but it will not go and search for sublinks. Right. Cause that, that would open a whole rabbit hole. Like imagine you go to one like landing page, every link goes to social, right? You have, you have a footer that has your website, your social, your Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram. And it has also some other thing. It's going to follow every link and try to scan everything from every link. It would, that's what we call data pollution, right? Cause now yeah. it's all of a sudden on Instagram scanning, whatever outside of your purview and your, your direct line of information. So you do have to be a little bit more intentional about what you share with it. Uh, it can't be like a subdirectory with tons of extra information. Cause like I said, a, a link to social will instantly pollute your data. So Richard, your hand was up, my friend, go ahead. Oh, your mic is not working. I think um, it, oh, there that, we go. Was a, that was a mistake. Oh, <laughs> all right. But, but all I'll right. say hello to you anyhow. <laughs> Welcome buddy. Appreciate you. Hey, I do have one question thinking okay. about it. Okay, on cold emails, all right, when someone sent and using this system out there, since I already have their contact information, yeah, uh, can I add a tag to them as uh, an opt in? What were what, CDR, CDR? great question, Richard? Well, actually, a similar question was asked earlier. As of right now, today, guys, this is this is still early. The answer is yes, eventually, but right, right, right now, if you guys send a campaign, it would still it wouldn't be able to recognize the person who's viewing the video today. It's coming very, very soon, though. We wanted to get this out to your guys' uh, hands as soon as possible because this is happening, right? It's happening very quickly. And so we want, wanted to get you in your hands, get feedback, and just be aware that we are going to be improving this and releasing updates for it uh, very regularly over the next couple of weeks and months. One of those is exactly what you just described there, Richard, which is, let's say I send a video to 100 people. I already have their emails. That's how I sent them the video. So I don't need it to then capture their email, right? So what right. it needs to do is it needs to recognize the email, just like it does when you send a campaign. It recognizes who, who's looking at the video and it tracks and it tells you, Darius watched 100% of your video. So that technology, uh, it exists. The, the pieces just aren't plugged into each other yet. So pro probably very, very soon. I, I imagine maybe next week or or shortly thereafter, it will be able to do that where 
you send a video to Darius and the AI piece recognizes that it's Darius viewing that video page. So I have to tuned. say something to the group, all right, and to your company. Uh, I am new, all right, I'm going to uh, upgrade to the pro. Thank you. I've used a lot of systems and I am extremely impressed with the technology, I'm more than extremely impressed with your training sessions, folks. You are 100% cool. Thank you, brother. <laughs> I appreciate that, man. We we do really pride Thank ourselves you. on that. And I, I tell Ruben, we talk about this all the time, is, guys, this is like our baby. This is our, this is our investment. It's our whole life, really, right? Like, literally, our whole livelihood is here. And so um, we're very passionate people. We're very motivated and driven. And this is just, it means so much to us. And so... You will find that we we're here. I, I make myself very available. Ruben mentioned every single weekday. Robin and Ina um, will sub for us on Tuesdays, live chat, live training, one to one support. So Richard, I do appreciate you uh, your 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 thoughts on that. And we do we we try as hard as we can here, guys, to make sure you have the support and stuff that you need. Well, you're appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Likewise, you guys inspired me to be more active in how I'm walking my new clients along. Uh, because of how you uh, provide that service to us. Yeah. It's, it really has inspired me to make sure that I'm always there, you know, hold my client's hand as they're going forward as well. So amazing. Thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for saying that, Kevin. And thank you for coming forward and being an early adopter. You know, it yeah. takes guts to go out and, and try new stuff and, and you're doing it and and we support you. I, I want to, Darius, this is a surprise that I, I'll, I'll share with the group now, but I've been wanting to surprise you with it but it's the ability to embed a video directly into the messaging experience so that you can click oh, wow. play right from the messenger. Oh, wow. So that's, that's going to be perfect for you, Kevin, because you're going to have great videos on you and your personality and what you do and how you connect people. So stay tuned. I'm inspired for you, Kevin, you know, rock on. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and guys, I I've also, as we're listening here, I see a couple things, Charles, I love, I love where your brain's going, brother. We're getting some good, uh, Concepts there. Charles had the question of, can we update the FAQs with a CSV file? I'm like, that that makes sense, right? Like why type one at a time? Why not just have a yeah. file and just like, boom, there's um, 20 FAQs. Like, all right. I, I have, okay, I have one objection for that because I've thought about the bulk importer thing yeah. for FAQs. The the concern that I have is data pollution You're right. because look, if you, if you miss, if you swap, questions and answers and they become like this the whole thing is going to get messed up <laughs> it's like, you know I, the I, cost? The i'm answer an is old orange. excel yeah. guy i i'm an old school excel guy like i love i used to program in excel and there there it's so easy to make a mistake so you know there's commas there's semicolons there's you know the pipelines and the last thing that I want to see is, D Darius, this is your favorite word, pollution. <laughs> so, yeah. so I, I might I might just, you know, little put a put little pause on that. But I, I do see the value because it's a one-click thing. But, hey, it's 20 FAQs. You know, let's go be intentional and, you know. Right. Like, I, I think even easier, Charles, than, than the, the CSV import is the the instant generation. And then you can, like like Kenyatta did, you just go have it scan the site, generates yeah. 20. And then right. you can you can pick and choose the ones That's that you it. like. You're like, these guys are not good, not relevant. Because as as Ruben and I have iterated a couple times, guys, more is not better. Like yeah. better, more relevant, more accurate information is better here. Not just more data. That's actually a detriment. It's going to pollute your your answers. So well, yeah, there is, Ruben, there was there were two that Ira gave me. I did not include. Nice. Oh, okay. They were nice. they were irrelevant. Good. They kind of didn't make sense. Or um, even actually reminded me that there's probably something on my website. Right. I need yeah. <laughs> Remove. I was like, wait, why is it talking about that? You know, right. so I'm like, it found oh, the that, old that. thing you didn't even know was there. <laughs> didn't even know it was there. So that kind of, I made a note. I'm like, oh, go figure out where yeah. it learned that from off the website and remove that. But yeah. I, I actually just had an idea that you, you said something that made sparked an idea, is that um that you create different SIAs for mm -hmm. um different, I guess FAQ. So yeah. as an example, you asked the question. What are behavioral superpowers, right? right. And because that was one of the frequent asked questions and it gave an answer. Yeah. So people take an assessment yeah. and then they get results, behavioral right. insights. Yeah. And there's 10 behavioral identities as a as yeah. an example, right? So I could probably program it to where someone could ask, well, or like, what are the 10 
behavioral identities and maybe even have an answer for each one. Right. Like if, you know, um, if you're a strategist, it'll give a little blip about what it means to be a strategist or an influencer or an initiator or whatever. Yep. I think I could really formulate it to do those FAQs yes. in that way. But then Ruben, you're like, oh, well, maybe there's a video that I yeah, have that maybe yeah. answers the question. And then underneath it maybe says, oh, so you're a strategist interested in what um, a reflective thinker is? Right. Or maybe something like that. And then that's really cool teach them about the styles that they aren't. So that's awesome. There's just like a million things. It seems like that it could come from this. This is wild. And thank you. And I'm so excited to use this more. Yeah, um, I know. This new integration. And uh, I'm thrilled. Thank you. Um, Kenyatta, I wanted to just give you a shout out. You know, um, we, we've met. I appreciate you. I love your vibe. You know, you're such <laughs> a valuable resource in our community. You're a leader. We we need you. You know, we need more people like you to lift us up and to motivate us and to inspire us. So, you know, thank you for what you're doing. And, you know, I've been to your website and I've researched you and I, and I just I really, really appreciate you. Um, I have such a good welcome. feeling about, thank, about what thank- you're up to. I think you have a great growth story. Um, I that, you know, the, the thing, this quick story that I wanted to share with you is that, you know, we, we actually hired a business coach and I had never actually officially hired a business coach in, in my career. I'd never done it. Because I think my one of my biggest objections was that I, I want someone really niche for very specifically what I'm working on, which is a software industry that works, you know, with technologically savvy folks and high growth companies. And we finally found someone that sort of fits that that bill. And you know, the things that I learned in the experience of eventually, you know, hiring a coach and bringing them on, I think I, I'd really summarize it down to these three things. You know, number one is that. For me, it was all about the validation. It was all about the social proof. Like who else have they worked with and what other results has that other person received? So, you know, when I think about you configuring your your SIA, you know, I'd love to see case studies, testimonials, like very specific data-driven information on how your clients have gained success. You know, one of the FAQs could be like, what are some case studies? And then, and then it's got a long list of case studies. You know, what are some testimonials? What kind of results can people expect to receive? You know, the other thing that I think about is like, a, I don't know, a guarantee. I don't know if that's a good word to use, but like, what's the policy, the guarantee, the, the certificate? Because, you know, one of the reasons why someone doesn't want to spend four or five digits for services is because they don't know if at the end of the year, they, they've spent $10,000 and they got nothing in return. So there is objections in there. And thinking about those objections allow us, allows us to create really intelligent FAQs. Like, what if I feel like I'm not getting my value, you know, out of this service, out of these coaching services? You know, well, we offer this type of guarantee, X, Y, you have to do element of P and we provide X, Y, Z. It's really about getting ahead of those objections. That's what those FAQs do, I think. Yep. And then the last thing, Kenyatta, you're, you have so much charisma and I love watching you in videos and stuff and even here with you. And there's this new type of vibe that I think we're all going to have to learn how to do with communicating in video, which is directing the person because historically it's been click on the link below, right? Mm-hmm. So this has been the, the thing, click on the link below to book a time in my calendar. Now it's, you know, click on the link below to engage with Sia, my AI assistant and ask Sia anything that you want to ask because Sia has been highly trained. So, um, you know, on the desktop version, it's going to be on the side panel eventually. It's this really nice side widget that we're going to say. So on this page, you might say, you know, you can chat with Sia. So I hope that information helps you. Thanks again for doing what you do. That is so huge. Thank you. I love the idea of not click the link below, but chat with Sia below, right? Yeah, you know, like, right. Have a chat with Sia. And I was taking notes on the things that you were saying that are important, you know, that are those objections that people may have, obviously around case studies and tests. But I have all of that. Right. I just not presented it, you know, in the way that you just d- described that it, this will make it really interactive to be able to do that. Um, right. So I love it. And thank you. And the last thing I'll say is you and I did a podcast a long time ago, Ruben. I Absolutely. I recall that. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I want to go back and actually watch that again. Cause yeah. I, cause what's transpired since then yeah. <laughs> you know, around this behavioral tool is just phenomenal. Um, and there's lots of cool things. So I'm going to have to watch that again and even repost it and share it with people to let people know, Hey, Go check out Dub because Dub is amazing. And all my yeah. stuff is going to be on here now going forward with Sia. Oh, so you, you know I'm going to be a proponent and an advocate for what you guys do. So thank you for very That's much. That's cool. There, there's something that that we do here at, at our company at Dub, which I think is really interesting. 
We're very intentional when it comes to data pollution on SIA with FAQs. Like we do, do not want to put anything that's superfluous in there. So we're very intentional when we do that. However, with IRA, the AI writing assistant on Dub, we will put some of the most garbage information into IRA. We'll, we'll have a Zoom meeting. We'll export the transcript. We're lazy. It's like 545. We just want to get the heck out of there. And we just go put this like 500 word, you know, blitz job into Ira. And we say, Ira, I'm exhausted. Please write me a really punchy, you know, 150 character FAQ. And it's like, wow, that was amazing. You just took like garbled information that's nonsensical from some Zoom conversation and you distilled it down to an FAQ. And it's like one of the funnest things to watch because it's like, wow, thank it's like the easy button from Staples, you know? Yeah. So be, in, be intentional. It sounds like you already are, but use IRA to help you craft that information because IRA can kind of take everything and it's not going to, that's not a pollution thing. That's just a, a one-time thing. You don't have to save it to your scripts. You just use it and then you copy the output and then you're done. <laughs> uh, one, one last thing here, guys, we, we'll, we'll transition here to our, our closing. Um, a couple of things. As I mentioned, this is brand new technology. We've mentioned also before the, our sort of innovator's dilemma, right? Where as new technology is released, there's going to be things tend to go wrong, right? Like like Ruben has the analogy of the, the Tesla, the self-driving. They, uh, they, they, the full autopilot was like really expensive and it was full of a ton of bugs and they're still working them out. Now they've released it. They want to get that into people's hands, but the early adopters are the ones that are going to go figure out those little issues and stuff. So we're asking for you guys to use it to enjoy it, but to give us your feedback. Like if something doesn't yeah. work, come tell us, please. Like we, we don't have a, there's not an API automatic integration that tells us when something went wrong with your, your SIA. So we're asking for you guys to get your hands dirty and to tell us, Hey, this was unexpected. This was weird. This was whatever. And we're either going to say, okay, here's where we can make an improvement or we can say, Oh, that was user error. We can deal with that. And it's going to help us tremendously with this moving forward to make it better for you guys, for everybody. So there's that piece of it, guys. Where this is the innovator's dilemma, Ruben. You actually know that there's a book, right? <laughs> that have full yeah, book on this. But but that's essentially what it is. That when you're on the bleeding edge of of anything, of technology, of innovation, you're going to deal with that other part of it that is the unknown. So there's that piece. The second piece, as I mentioned a couple times, we're we're innovating this technology very regularly. So it may look and change a little bit different. The tutorial video, like the interface, might change. So just be aware that. Sometimes, guys, we we release stuff so quickly that we didn't have time to come do the tutorial yet. So if if anything is ever discombobulated or seems like, wait, this isn't right, this isn't, just come talk. And we'll say, oh, well, here's the new link or here's, we're working on it today or whatever. Um, but just give us the feedback is all we're asking. It's, it's yeah, I mean, new, I, so it's changing. Yeah, and that, and that, by the way, that is a common conflict for all companies. Darius, how many Google support articles have you been to in your life? where the video was wrong, there was no information. I mean, this is a trillion dollar company, yeah, right? Google's is the worst. They never provide <laughs> screenshots and they never provide direct links because they know the things are changing all the time yeah. and then all the links are broken and all the images are no longer relevant. So they don't put those. They just say, go to this section. You're supposed to go find it. And I, I find that really frustrating. And so I try not to write our articles like that. We try to give screenshots and videos and links, but then those things are always changing. So it's like, you have yeah. articles, or articles that need to be updated. So we're, we're it's, on a, it's a rose garden for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was that awesome. and, and the future of the tool guys, we've really, we've, we've talked about a couple of features that are um, currently in development. Like I showed you guys the lead capture options. Those are in development, the tag option, the tracking. So I've even teased a couple of things. Ruben even teased a couple of things today. So there's things that are available right now, guys, that the article, the database, I'm um, sorry, the, the video, the tutorial, that's all available, ready to go right now. Some of the stuff we've teased here today in this webinar is not in the support articles or even on the live site yet. So just be aware of that. If you're rewatching this webinar, you may or may not see a couple of the things that we've we've teased today, but you will in very short time. So <laughs> thank you guys so Thanks, much. Guys. Seriously, we tremendously appreciate you, our, our daily users here, our power users, the people that give us our feedback. And people that don't even ever talk to us and just use it. We, we appreciate you too. So, hey, Rob, I'm giving you a standing ovation for your performance. Yeah. Right oh, on. thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks, brother. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. See you guys. See you at thanks, the Thanks, everybody. Rob. See you next right. time. Thanks so much. Bye -bye. Can't wait to hear from you. Bye-bye.